Yeah, now we're live in uh, Long Beach, California. Sorry, I'm late, guys. I'm looking right now for the the protest that's supposed to be at the police station. So I haven't caught up with the protest yet, but uh, hopefully it's right up here one more block. I think I see people gathered one block away. So we're live in Long Beach uh, for Frost Morad, uh, who was killed by Long Beach police. Y'all watch your commercial, I'll give you a minute. Alright, I hear it. I'm almost there. Sorry guys, I'm a little late. My bus stop, uh, my bus stop was closed where I was going to change buses and get the express. And um, so I had to find another way to, to, uh, to Long Beach because it's an express. So you just can't walk to the next stop. So it sounds like they're shining pretty loudly. There's a bunch of news trucks back at Lincoln Park and I see one up here. Just took the megaphone. So I think Revcom might have turned it up a little because I heard it was kind of calm. But uh, Long Beach police are notorious. So they just kill people like crazy down here. Um, and they get away with it a lot. So a lot of Frost's friends came down from like Woodland Hills and Moore Park and like um, a very different culture than Long Beach. So it should be interesting to see how that plays out. So Long Beach is a city south of Los Angeles. Um, you can get here on public transportation pretty easily from LA. If you guys want to throw in for that bus money, that'd be awesome. It cost me money to get down here. So I'm seeing like between 50 and 100 people down here. So this is a uh, Long Beach Police Department. Okay, a couple hundred, sorry. Marcella Hearn, Red Sea Beast, John Dale Bell, Red Sea Beast, Jose Carlos Pedro, Red Sea Beast. Alright, guys, we heard you say it. We wouldn't be out here all night. That's what we're not trying to do. Now I want to welcome up uh, someone who's probably seen on the news. Uh, you've probably been amazed at how articulate and eloquent she is. But to give her some space, you can only imagine what it's like losing your best friend. And think about how much more it hurts from your best friend to your brother. Let's get a big round of applause for Donna. This is Frost's sister who's, who's coming up to speak right now.
there's no way to follow something like that, and I'm not even gonna try to, but next young man I'm introduced to you is a friend of mine, he's been a friend of mine for about three years. He's been involved in this fight since his best friend, Michael Knight, was shot in the back several times by the Downey Police Department. Community that's about a 20 minute drive from here at Long Beach. And this guy's been a relentless fighter, he's been one of the leaders. He's also a co-founder of an organization, a coalition of families called the Young Survivor Legacy Support Network. And this is how I got my start. I started with them out on the streets of Downey, out on the streets of Anaheim after the uprising in 2012. That was my first time getting out on the streets as an actor. So I want to introduce everybody to Damian Ramirez. He probably won't need this, I know him. Hi, hi. <laughs> I'll mess that thing up. Go ahead, yeah, David. Yeah. Well, I want to introduce you to Sonia Hernandez. Her brother Martin Angel Hernandez was murdered in the streets of Anaheim by Officer Dan Hurtado. He was running through his life. He surrendered to police, and he was shot in the head with an AR-15 in a crime of retribution. Retribution. And because of Martin's uh, status in the street, there was no justice for her brother in the courts. But there will be justice in the street. By that I mean things are going to change. Things are going to change. We have to be the ones that make that change. When I hear you speak, sister, do I bring Sonny up here with me? When my friend got murdered, it, it, my life changed. I was a union plumber. I was a union plumber. I had a life. I had a family. I had goals. I had a plan. And all that got thrown out the window when my friend got murdered. The night he got murdered, he was unarmed, running for his life from a six foot four, 250 pound bully that said he was gonna blow his fucking head off. He shot my friend in the back with an MP5 sub machine gun three times within eyesight of his wife. And they wouldn't even let her say goodbye to her husband because he might tell the truth. He might tell her what happened. He might tell her the last story, the final story of his life. So they kept her from him. He had to give his final words to an EMT. The night I found out my friend was murdered, I went to his memorial and I made an oath and I've lived up to it ever since. You've got to be true. This isn't a one-time thing. This isn't something you're going to come out today and you're going to wash yourself clean and you're going to go home tomorrow and you're going to feel good about yourself. Your whole world has changed. And you have to change with it. You have to respond. You have to become an activist if you're not an activist. I didn't know what to do. I'm a plumber. I've got friends working on that building right down there. We helped build that Duke Nation building. I wouldn't name it after Duke Nation if it was up to me. <laughs> we have to change our lives. We have to change our minds. We have to open our hearts. We have to open our mouths. And most important, we cannot quit. You cannot quit. Last week, he mentioned Noel Aguilar. Last week, we were in the streets of Compton and Long Beach on the board of our Compton and Long Beach down our teaser. We took the streets. We shut down traffic. We got down there, we got in the streets, we shut down traffic. We made them stop and listen to us and wonder what the hell's going on. Right now, we're a sideshow. We need to be in the street. We cannot quit. It's all right right now. Next time you're out here, let's get it big. Let's get in the street and shut it down with a rock. scared to die because it could be you and you know when they killed Faraz you know what it said to me it could be anybody look at this kid look at this kid's got a future look at this kid he's gonna change the world when I heard his friend saying that that they were talking about police brutality and they wanted to change things and then he felt like oh my god somebody was listening to us and they took his life so you love that kid you love that son you love that brother you make it your goal you make it your goal to fight for police brutality, to end police terror. Make it your oath at his grave, like it was mine, to stop this, to be part of the change, and to have this world up in a better condition than the one you received it. My heart, our souls are with you. You stand up, we will stand behind you. Thank you. Yeah! Try, but I just want to let you guys know uh, this day is going to end. But we're going to go home and we're going to go back to our jobs and our families and our schools and our lives. And you can forget about it. You can have a, a good time remembering the day that you stood up for something. 
If you do, you stood for nothing. Wow. It was just a show. Is that all this is? No! no! We need to stand together, not just now, but from here on out. Do not go home and shower this off with television and food and any pleasure that makes you feel comfortable. Because some people don't get to go home. They are left in the street like a dog. And we will not stand for it. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice. was just there. Yeah. Like, Are you the one that I was like, yeah. She goes, why did you... Can I show you... your face? Yeah, she goes, okay. why did you um, put us on blast like that? Because... I was like, why are you justifying murders? <laughs> yeah. She goes, not me. I'm a good... I'm a human. She goes, I'm a human. I'm a good person. Well, I, was like, I was like, you can only be so good. Like, you work for the them. Even if you... Uh, she goes, we've had problems with the police. We've had problems getting information from the police. I said, why don't you do a story on that? Yeah. You can't, though. Yeah. She goes, I'm a journalist. I was like, as much as they'll let you be. You know? a journalist. She's a journalist as much as they'll let her be one. But you're, you're more of a journalist than she is. Yeah, with a cracked Metro piece of PCS phone. Yeah. You can tell. Just because you have a fancy camera and expensive equipment doesn't guarantee it. Truth. CBS edited the 911 call on the news last night. Oh my god! Trying to on the wave over here and then Josh and I cross. Well, I think you just were a leader right now. And so then people follow. But people, you know, people are ready to follow. Not the cops! 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 Not the cops!
and obviously they, I mean, it's an hour now. So, yeah, this is, I, I try, I told them, like, LA culture is an hour late. Like, people don't want to listen to people who, this is true. I mean, some people are probably just now arriving. Yeah. And it's over. Yeah, that's, can't, it's too short. Well, this is not. I mean, I'm encouraged by this. Yeah. Like, this. The, I think most of the more 